What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here. Recording a little overreaction theater. Uh, we're going to put a little pause on Marvel Monday for today. Uh, I will do um, a comic card grading video probably in the middle of the week. Um, just wanted to pop on and do some NFL Week 1 overreaction stuff. I'm recording this prior to the night game. So if anything happens crazy in Rams Bears, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, week one, wild week, and card prices definitely moved based off performance. Uh, we're going to talk about four players and four cards really quick. Uh, but it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a minute for all the uh, the data tools and whatever to shake things out. And you know, are these price spikes real? Do they hold? You know, is this just a today thing? So, you know, we'll see how this stuff goes throughout the week. And is, is this a sneak peek how the rest of the season's going to go? Or is this just people primed for football week one and any little thing happens and they immediately spend a bunch of money? Uh, we'll find out. You know, we'll see how this whole kit and caboodle shakes out here. Uh, before we dive in, like, comment, sub, all the YouTube stuff down below. Uh, I'll talk about the Browns game real quick. Uh, you know... The Chubb fumble, the punter dropping the ball pretty much all within about five minutes of real time basically summed up that game. Uh, you know, they played extremely well in the first half and then fell apart in the third quarter with the Chubb fumble and then the punter uh, inexplicably dropping the ball on their own 10-yard line, giving the Chiefs a short field. And that was pretty much all she wrote. Baker had a pick at the end, but it looked like he was trying to get the ball out, got tripped up by the Kansas City defensive lineman as he was scrambling. Who knows? Maybe he was trying to make a play. Maybe he wasn't. It is what it is. Uh, really, that game flipped on the Chubb fumble and the punter. You know, if he punts away and they have to drive the whole field, maybe they get a stop. Maybe they hold him to three. And on the Chubb fumble, they were driving right down the field on them. Uh, three or four consecutive plays in a row with big chunks of yardage, and then he fumbled and gave the ball back, and then they quickly scored. So you cannot make mistakes like that against the Chiefs. Uh, they are one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NFL, and you're playing in their stadium. Uh, you can't make mistakes like that. So we will see what happens next week. I thought, you know, Baker didn't throw any touchdowns. I'm sure people in the comments will give me all sorts of grief for that, but uh, he played extremely well in the first half, and move the offense up and down the field. Like they're a running team. That's what they're going to do. Uh, and he made some really nice throws. He was dead on accurate uh, in the first half of that game. And then, like I said, the game got away from him in that third quarter. I feel like they hardly had the ball in the third quarter and then they fell behind and, you know, is what it is. So uh, on to some guys that really shot up. I made a couple posts about this throughout the day as I was kind of noticing things. So like I said, none of this stuff's in market movers yet because uh, all the data tools run a day behind. Uh, so you have to wait till tomorrow morning for it to pull data on most of them. Uh, so let's just kind of scroll through. I pulled up 130 point on a couple of these in real time. Uh, Kyler Murray, and I'm going to loosely talk about one card for each player just to kind of keep this quick. Uh, but in general, the players themselves went up. I just picked the card that had the most transactions for each player so you can kind of see it happen. Kyler Murray based Donruss, PSA 10s. Uh, you can see here on Friday, September 10th, 120, 115, 127, you know, nothing crazy. About 120 to 115 bucks. Here's one that ended Sunday morning. And then we start getting into crazy town. Uh, ignore the optic ones. We're just talking about the base Don Russ. Here's multiples that sold at 130 a piece. Here's one that went for 160. Best offer buy it now. 150, 125. So you can see the bins getting scooped. 125. Uh, 129. So all the low dollar bins, this is early in the game. Uh, this is before things went completely crazy. Uh, I think he'd already had one or two touchdowns already at this point. Everyone's picking up the cheap buy it nows. Uh, and then those get bought up and then you see the auctions start to kick in. Here's a 140, a 150, a 139. And we'll hop over to eBay itself real quick because even 130 point lags behind a little bit. Uh, here are some that sold throughout the afternoon, and you can see they basically just continue to escalate. Uh, 145, 172, 182 for his PSA 10 prism. Now, there's going to be some random outliers here. Uh, you know, does it hold at 180? I don't know. We'll see. Usually what happens is these tens, things tend to spike 
right at the time of the event, then the market kind of cools off a little bit and, and it'll pull back just a little bit. But, uh, you know, these things started the day out at around 125, 100 ish, give or take 130, 115. And then there was at least some sales of 150 plus. So what it currently sits at, you know, I don't know. Once again, we'll kind of find out as the, the days move on. But in general, the point of this is Kyler Murray got a very big run up today. You know, he was a guy I didn't buy any of them. I don't own any Kyler Murray, but he was a player that I thought in the preseason, his stuff did look a little too cheap. You know, we talked about him a lot comparing him, his prices compared to Josh Allen. We'll see how uh, his prism PSA 10 shakes out and any key colors or field levels and all that jazz. But that stuff we're going to need to give a couple days. Um, this Don Rest paper has quite a few of them out there. Uh, but in general, Kyler had a very nice run up. Next on the list, our boy Jalen Hurts. Uh, I don't know how good of a real NFL quarterback he's going to be. He's a fantastic fantasy quarterback uh, and he's going to put up numbers. A lot of people don't aren't real big on him or aren't high on him. Now, full caveats aside. He played the Falcons today. They had the wor one of the worst defenses in the league last year. So he could easily turn into a pumpkin next week. He's always going to be an exciting player because of the way he runs around. Devontae Smith looked pretty good today. But once again, it was the perfect setup for them. So if you were in the Hurts and looking for a window to sell, I would not blame you 100% for pulling the trigger. Once again, we're looking at his base prism PSA 10 here. Uh, you can see Saturday, 195, 179, 177 on Saturday, September 11th. Then we get into Sunday, and this moves quick. 235, 300, 300, best offer buy it now. 300, 300, 300, 300. Uh, what do we get here as we scroll up closer? 265, 250, 255, and then um, some non-prism color here. So... Basically, you know, depending on how much you buy in, I mean, well, there's plenty of sales here to back this up. These $300 sales um, goes from 180 to, I don't know, let's call it a 250 to $300 card in an afternoon. Uh, once again, will these prices hold as the week plays out? I don't know. More inventory hits the market. People go dig through their Pelican cases and list more. We'll see. We will see what happens. Uh, but for today anyway, and that's why, you know, when these players spike like this, you have to be ready to pull the trigger and list and sell if it's a player that you're looking on selling. He could come out next week, ball out again, and it goes to the next level, or he could come out and struggle and, you know, does it start to pull back? The pulling back is what we don't know about yet. That stuff's going to take longer to play out. You know, Josh Allen lost today. People are not going to run and start dumping their Josh Allens. And what it's going to take is auctions to finish to see those prices decrease on players going down because uh, people are going to hold out hope to see if he bounces back next week, regardless of player. Uh, Josh Allen's one that, you know, didn't play too great today. The Bills lost to the Steelers. You hate to see it. Uh, so we'll see what his prices look like throughout the week, but that stuff is much harder to find uh, trend lines on literally three hours after the games, uh, unlike players going up because you could actually see a ton of sales because there's demand being driven for the player. So we'll see how the week plays out for some of the guys that didn't play or for the guys that did not play well, you know, we'll see how that shakes out. But guys going up, Hertz, Murray are the two big ones. Another one is Jameis Winston in a weird game. I did not catch a lot of that game because I was watching the Browns game, uh, but his stat line was really strange. He didn't throw for very many yards, but threw for a ton of touchdowns. So this was earlier in the week. This is just his base tops chrome. 100 bucks, 85 bucks. There's some refractors mixed in here. Uh, that was earlier in the week. And then we get up until today, uh, 165, 185, 175, 175, 195, 220, uh, 200. So basically as fast as they were getting listed, they were just getting straight bought. So we'll see where Winston goes from here. Uh, they looked great today. That was one of the most surprising scores of the day, in my opinion, uh, is what the Saints did to the Packers. Just how lopsided that was and how poor Aaron Rodgers played in that game. Once again, I did not get a chance to see that game. Uh, normally, I watch Red Zone. I just put Red Zone on and forget about it. But when the Browns play, uh, I usually throw uh, that on and then flick between that and Red Zone. Since the Browns played at four, I only missed a couple games, but that Packers game was one of them, so... 
Once again, we'll see how do Rogers prices pull back this week. We'll see. Once again, going down, I think, takes a little bit more time. Going up happens in a, in a blink of an eye. Last one, Tua. Uh, Dolphins played pretty well today. Tua looked pretty good. Didn't have big numbers, but played well. Uh, we see here Saturday, September 11th. This is his base prism, PSA 10. We have a 235. Then we jump to Sunday. Uh, and there was some stuff before this around that low $200 mark. Here's Sunday, 285, 275. Uh, and those are variations. There's not a ton of his stuff in PSA 10 slabs. Uh, but you see a nice little $50 spike there on Tua. So to me, those are the biggest four winners of the week. Uh, I know Mac Jones had some moments. Zach Wilson had some moments and blowout time of that game. Um, so once again, we'll see how some of those prices play throughout the week. I just wanted to hop on real quick and touch on these four guys because these are the guys that, to me, had the biggest price increases throughout the day. Maybe I'm forgetting someone, but uh, these four definitely had uh, a nice run up as the games were happening. Uh, and all four were pretty undervalued when you think about it. No one was really, you know, Jameis Winston, not the most preseason hyped player. Obviously saw a little bit of run up when he got named the starter uh, over Taysom Hill. Tua, you know, Tua and Hurts both getting big price increases as the two guys that were the cheapest out of that draft class. You know, Herbert and Burrow got all the love, had inflated prices. Hurts and Tua really didn't. They were relatively affordable in the grand scheme of things. Uh, they play well. They see big run-ups. Kyler Murray, once again, I thought his stuff was too cheap most of the offseason when you compared his prices to other good quarterbacks. Uh, and Kyler was really good last year. I think people forgot, got hurt, and was not the same after the shoulder injury last year. He was definitely was a different player the second half of the season, and I think that shoulder really bothered him. Uh, you saw today he was slinging the ball all over the field, running around like a madman. Uh, and they looked good. And DeAndre Hopkins is a freaking, what a receiver. He had some incredible catches today. Uh, I saw a decent chunk of that game. It was on red zone quite a bit. So uh, that's all I have for you guys and girls today. Uh, let me know what you think. You know, are you buying these guys, selling these guys? And if if you have players like this that pop off, you need to be ready to move them unless you're holding for throughout the season. Uh, and and it, most of the time, guys like this, you know, if you got into them cheap, and you're able to make a good profit on them. If you have multiples, sell some off, roll the dice on some, like we always talk about. But, uh, you know, when it comes to football, I am always, I'm going to take my profits where I could get it if the guy keeps going and, you know, his prices spike even more and I lose out. So be it, because I think more often than not, these guys spike and then something happens and they pull back to earth again. So Kyler might be one I would probably hold on to a little bit longer because I actually believe in Kyler as a player. Hurts, I like him as a fantasy player. I'm just not sure he's going to be an actual really good NFL player, but he keeps putting numbers up. You can't deny it. Uh, Tua and Winston are guys, you know, Winston especially, I don't know, that team's weird. His day-to-day -day was so weird. I need more time to analyze that. But uh, and, and Tua, uh, they won, but, you know, he didn't look like good, um, but didn't like blow the, blow, the, blow the world up with big stats. So we'll see how things shake out throughout the week. Uh, like I said, we'll get a grading comic card video out later this week, probably Tuesday. Maybe we'll just push it to Tuesday. And then I'm going to do another NFL week one video later this week once we have a little bit more data. But I just kind of wanted to touch on uh, basically what we thought was going to happen, at least through week one, has happened. Guys played well and their prices escalated extremely quickly. Now, do they hold? That's what we don't know. Time will tell. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys and girls in the next one. Peace.